Well, it's another dark, cold evening here in Hitchin Town Centre. I'm going to be visiting some of the most scary, haunted places the town has to offer. For every ghost sighting, there's a story. I'm going to tell you some of those stories this evening. So come on. As Haunted Hitchin, we've carried out many paranormal investigations over the years. Now, for those of you who don't know Haunted Hitchin, let's take a look. Hello, is there anyone here with us? That's a woman as well. What was that? What was that? What was that? Oh, no. Ray. 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 Dev. 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 Yeah, it's with you. It's with you. Right. What's that? Oh my God, did you hear that? So. Oh my God, what was that? <laughs> Are you alright, Rick? <clears throat> you gotta get out. Are you here? Yes? No? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. So if you're up for the journey, hold my hand, because this could get scary. During the day, Hitchin shows off its many fine buildings and rich variety of architectural styles. But of course, things look rather different at night. Like many ancient towns, Hitchin has its fair share of ghostly tales, many of course centred on the graveyard. But perhaps the church bells designed for that very purpose will keep evil spirits away this evening. In 1828, the recently buried body of Elizabeth Whitehead was dug up and taken by the resurrection men the grave robbers. To prevent further such thefts, the authorities erected stout metal gates around the hallowed ground and it was patrolled throughout the night by the parish beadle. Whether or not you believe in the supernatural, St Mary's Church has certainly had a turbulent history. In 910 AD, a Saxon timber church was burnt to the ground in the wars with the invading Danes. In 1115, a hurricane hit the town and again the church was damaged. 1292 saw a violent storm with many houses flooded and the church again suffering great damage. And in 1298, an earthquake resulted in it having to be entirely rebuilt. And then in 1304, the roof collapsed and a whole new church had to be constructed. It was in this alleyway next to this shop that during the 1930s when they were renovating the area they found a hidden chamber. In that chamber, there was a chalice, a vat of wine, and a skeleton. Since that day, spirits have been known to haunt this area. We carried out an investigation here at Anne Marie's back in 2013. Let's take a look. We've noticed the smell of tobacco smoke on the ground floor, and um, also the sound of hangers being moved when there's no one downstairs. We often get the feeling that you're being pushed down the stairs on these stairs. You know, the, the, every, every member of staff has felt this and um, it's just kind of an uncomfortable feeling. Sometimes when I'm making a cup of tea, I hear this noise and it makes me feel very uneasy. Speak. Oh. And that's a speak, is it? Yeah. There we go. Is that Griggs? That's that's a, like yeah. Yeah. That that's that was a male's voice. Is 
Sounded like Griggs. That was mm. Griggs. Sounded but... like Griggs then. Are you up here? I can now hear something up in that corner there. So Bev. <laughs> yeah, it's you spooked Bev. <laughs> Ooh, oh, you say Bev. You did say Bev. Yeah, just yeah, I had sort of creepy noises. I don't know, I'm really, really, really cold down here. I need to get out. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> Open the door! <laughs> no! Bloody hell, mate. <laughs> I thought we were stuck in there. <laughs> it's scary, isn't it? Oh, oh, oh. What was that? I don't know, there's, there's some weird <laughs> going on in here. I walked back to where that ladder was to have a look at that, and it was almost like something touched me on the shoulder. Oh, This alleyway behind me is Aaron's Alley and is aimed after Eugene Allen, who was on the run after murdering a tramp. Now Eugene, he lived in rooms above this alleyway and was so in fear of his life, he used to keep the bolts on the doors firmly shut every night. Eventually though, he was caught and hung and tried for murder back in 1758. His spirit reportedly haunting this alleyway ever since. Now this building behind me is the old Victorian police station here in Hitchin. Now it's in an amazing condition and some of its cells are still existing today. Now we did an investigation here for Haunted Hitchin three years ago. Let's take a look, it's one of our scariest ever. I actually work in the back building which is the old courthouse and is now the education support centre in Hitchin. Uh, we keep uh, term time hours but the, over the last seven years of having worked there I've got to know some of the staff who work in this building, the police station, and they've recounted their experiences over the years um, of paranormal activity. Um, one person in particular, um, an ex-member of staff, would regularly come over and, and, and tell us all about something, different things that had happened. Um, and I think really what stuck in my mind was that twice he attempted to get the building exorcised by different priests um, because he particularly experienced things like cold spots on the stairs. There was a shadow once on the stairs that wouldn't move, wouldn't leave. Um, and most of all, most regularly, when the staff were downstairs in the offices, they would hear really loud noises of things being scraped across the floor upstairs knowing that there was nobody up there um, and it would sound like furniture but it would be really really loud and obviously they'd go and investigate and there was never anything there so because of these happenings he he did call in a priest twice at one time it was a catholic priest and another time it was an anglican priest but the second occasion um, i'll never forget because he came over to us after the, he'd let the priest out and uh, he said oh, he'd been around the building with his holy water and, and saying some prayers and on letting him out the door something growled and he said it was really, really loud and he came over to us and he was very, very upset and he said, I turned to the priest and I said, what was that? And the priest said, what was what and he didn't hear it he said it was really really loud and he said it was something that was it sounded very angry so i mean mm. okay prisoner coming out look through yep he's with with an officer or something yeah, okay. yeah. unlock it all yeah okay bolts here obviously went in the wall yeah were you locked up here could be. 
should be. Mm. So, did you go to prison from here? Probably. Probably, yeah. What was your name? Um, Sid? I'm interested enough, I'm also getting the name Sid. Although, was that the policeman? Cedric? Stop. Stop. Cedric, is it Cedric? No. So this uh, gateway you see here. Up. Up. He said up. That was clear. Really? We're going up. We're going up to the courtroom. Have you been up these stairs before? Yes. yes, that's a definite yes. Yes. Did you kill someone? Did. It was yes, I think, yeah. Yes or did, yeah. Who did you kill? Oh. <laughs> what was that? Something touched my... No, perhaps I touched the table, did I? Uh, it was here. Tables. It was here. Did you just touch me? This building behind me is the Amour Salon. Now, this was different to other investigations. Because on this one, we invited the staff to communicate with the spirits through our spirit boxes. Now, the results were amazing. We have had a few things happen. We've had things being moved in the hallway. We've got one room in particular where when treatments are going on, there's a cold breeze that comes through. We actually had someone out to check that and it's a solid wall, there's nothing behind it. So there's no way that the breeze could have come from anywhere else. Um, we have had, someone said that they saw marks on the walls as well, like, like fingerprints on the walls. So I don't know what that's about. In my room, I've had things that I've put down, like sponges and beauty brushes that have been moved about. Um, yeah, there's loads of weird stuff that happens, really, yeah. Did you feel sort of a, like there's somebody watching you? Lots of people have said that they can feel that there's something there. I have definitely felt something. Um, I actually brought my partner here because I've got keys to the salon, so I brought him here to do a treatment on him in the evening. And um, I felt something in the hallway, on right behind me. Um, and my mum, who is often in the beauty room, often feels things on her as well, like cold, and she feels things on her back. So yeah, yeah. So you've not particularly felt uncomfortable, or does it feel like it's a nice, friendly presence? It's never anything that feels uncomfortable. It doesn't make you worry, you don't feel scared. It's normally quite a, you know, you, I feel at ease here. We've been here for years um, and we feel really at ease. But yeah, when you feel there's something here at night and you're on your own, it's not very nice. What sort of experiences have, have you had here? There have been several experiences. This room in particular, we've had a few. Um, where I'm standing here, we hear a thumping noise on the floor, but we can't work out where it comes from. And these mirrors also, when we come in some days, have just sort of moved across from where they should be. And the lady who uses this room is very particular about where her mirrors are. Next door, um, we have a strong smell of sage some days. Um, we'll come in and our holistic therapist does burn sage when she's doing some of her therapies. It's gone missing when she's wanting to use it and when she's not here, you get a very strong smell of that being burnt in that room. Um, and one of the therapists won't go in there, she won't go near the sink area, she's quite a, afraid of going in, in that, that room by the sink. Let's see if it's around there. Oh, oh, oh my God. It's off. That's brilliant. Now, there's nothing here, is there? So. Whatever's setting that off is definitely not electrical. Kind of in the middle of the room, aren't yeah. I, really? Yeah. So there's no... Um... It's interesting, like you say, this is where um, Alex was saying she felt a terrific presence coming from that safe. From she the could safe. feel the energy of all the... You know, that was his life in that safe, basically. The chap had empty it. He 
sounded a really kind of greedy man, didn't he? I mean, ordinarily, this would read zero as well, but I mean, this is creeping up as well. It's got 0.98. Still here. You're still here, Robert. Look. Little girl lived here with you. Your daughter. What was her name? Vicky. 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 Uh, yeah. Felt quite clear. Did you lose to lock Victoria in the cupboard upstairs? If she was naughty. Yes. yes. Yeah, clear. What was that? Was it you? What's that? What's wrong? Did you hear that? Got that. Yeah. Is that you trying to use my energy to communicate, to send a message of some sort? Yes. Yes. Do you not want me here? It sounded a bit like Get Out. It sounded like, yeah. Why, why do you not like me here? Said to be haunted by the ghost of Lord Havisham, who committed suicide here back in the 1800s. This is the Sun Hotel here in Sun Street. Now which room is haunted? Apparently his ghost is so terrifying that no one will tell. This building behind me is the Market Theatre here in Sun Street. This is the site of another one of our investigations. Let's take a look at the film. Well, the theatre's been here as a theatre since the end of 96. Okay. Um, it's built inside an old, well, we think possibly built inside uh, an old courtyard. Okay. Um, I mean, you do get a weird sense. There's a lot of sort of hidden areas in this theatre. So when you yeah. come up here, when you're on your own and it's all dark, you do feel very sort of, it feels very oppressive. Um, I was waiting backstage, so I was just behind That's where the yeah. curtains are over there. Yeah. Um, and I was about to sort of make an entrance and as, as I was waiting there was a flash I saw what I thought was almost like someone had flashed a light onto sort of a metallic surface that sort of flashed from across the other side of the thing. Wow. I mean I, I thought at the time that someone maybe had, there was a torch on the stage as part of the set and I thought maybe yeah. someone had turned it on by accident. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then I found out after the show that the two actors that were on stage that they were about here yes. had both felt a similar sort of presence at around the same, same time. time and they thought it was me turning a light on backstage um, and at the same time uh, uh, the guy who was doing the lights up there David um, he saw what he thought was someone almost getting up onto the stage wow. um, and that story uh, in, in different ways has been echoed through different shows over the years so we've actually had a number of different actors um, all, none of them who know each other actually right. um, that have all had different experiences where they've been doing shows here um, and in that they felt something or someone get up onto the stage in or, this corner. In this corner, yeah. Is there anyone here who wants to talk to us? Yeah, there is. Are you female? Yeah, there's quite a few of them up here. Yeah. Yeah. Did you die here? Oh, right, okay. What? Is there someone in this actual space here? Yeah, they say it's mm -hmm. here. I feel that? Cold. Has it got cold? It's got cold here. Really cold here. Oh yeah, just here. Can yeah. you feel it? Yeah. I know we need the door. That's, is it? But you can feel the actual... Mm -hmm. 
That was the woman's voice. That was the woman's voice, woman's voice, voice yeah. then. Oh. oh, hold on, we've got the three. Oh, yeah. 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 Did. Did something happen here? Or well, this is where you came a lot? This building behind me is the Hitchin Priory. Now during the Civil War, a soldier, a cavalier called Goring, was pursued by Cromwell's army and took refuge at Highdown House in Purton. Well, unfortunately, they captured him and his sweetheart there witnessed him being hacked to death. Now his sweetheart couldn't bear to live at Highdown, so she fled to live here. Now, did she ever leave? Because on the 15th of June, if the moon's full, his headless body is seen to be riding across the grounds to be reunited with his lady in grey. Well, I'm in reception and I've got Ravinda here. And now, you were just telling us you don't go down in the cellar. Is that right? No, um, it's quite a lot of us, really. We wouldn't go down to the cellar by ourselves because we do feel as though it, it feels a bit eerie and uncomfortable, okay. as if there is something down there. Has so there been any there. stories that you can recall that people have seen anything or heard anything? Um, I haven't seen anything or heard anything. Um, Just a general presence of that. Yeah, place. yeah. It's, it is. You do feel some cold spots down there as well, okay. and it just it doesn't feel right down there. Whereas every, everywhere else in the building is fine, apart from so that. So it's certainly cellar. not a place you go on your own. No, definitely not. And I wouldn't work. And once I was down there by myself um, in the bar, and I just wanted to get out. Well, okay. I wanted. To, uh, well, I wanted someone there with me. Yeah. The white lady. Which yeah. Is, um, which is a, a, a sort of. That's Something a common story. Common yeah. story, yeah. And you've actually seen this apparition. Now. Yeah. So um, it was a couple of years ago when we've had. I think it was around about Christmas. We had a really small party in okay. the cellar bar, and so about twenty people. Um, and I walked. Up, I walked upstairs, and it's the lady was actually on the stairs in a white dress. And I came down and I spoke to the host of that party. He says, right. "Oh, one of your guests is upstairs." He said, and I said, it's a lady in a white dress, and he said, oh, she's not part of our party. It was a very, very sort of old-looking sort of clothing. Yeah, 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 long dress down to her ankles. Okay. But she just looked normal. She just looked like, as if she was part of... Uh, and you, you know, did mention, actually, at the same time, there was another room here. Yeah. you see a lady looking out. Window, yeah. Tell us a little bit about that. There's a music room upstairs, okay. and years and years ago, um, the story I've been told is that a lady, um, she's waiting for her neck boyfriend to come back from the Navy okay. or something, he didn't make it and then she committed suicide. But the room itself? It's, it's um, eerie, it's cold and it smells different. Okay. It smells a bit dampy, yeah. um, but it's not dampy, it's, it's this eerie smell it's got. Um, and we all went up there one day and we were just messing about, like staff do. <laughs> and um, one of the girls, she actually took a picture by the window and she's got a white line down Wow. down the picture so yeah fantastic well thanks for sharing those that's uh, right. thoughts with us that's, that's yeah. brilliant thank you that's okay i'm leaving It was here in Victorian times that a caretaker out walking his dogs reportedly said what he could only describe as seeing a legion of Roman soldiers marching across the field. Now, apparently they've been seen on a regular basis. Perhaps they're marching into eternity. This building behind me, now a private house, was once the Eric T. Moore's bookshop. Now, we did a fantastic investigation here only a few years ago. And uh, we come up with some quite amazing results. Let's have a look at the film. Two 19th century cottages that were knocked together. And I know that it um, was once a pub called the Postboy Inn. Um, but I don't really know much more about it than that. 
most important thing is have you had any experiences yourself? Um, I have, I have and some of the other staff have if we're on our own either first thing in the morning or late in the evening that we can hear footsteps upstairs and we know that we're the only people in the building so we've had that we also had um, a member of staff who on his days off sometimes used to pop in when he was out walking the dog and it's quite a, well, it's a large Airedale and it was quite happy to go anywhere in the shop but it didn't like the clock it wouldn't come past here and we don't know why it just spooked him um, and the only other thing I can think of is that we had uh, my keys, a set of keys that went missing. We all hunted high and low, couldn't find them. And the next day we came in and they were in plain view on the desk. And four of us had looked for those keys. No idea what happened. <laughs> what was that? What was that? Oh my God. What was that? That was, from the that was straight ahead. Back in the map room, yeah? Is that you? Spirits? Did you do that? Oh! What's that? What's happening, Tony? Why is that doing what that? What the heck? She's off the scale. Why is it doing that? Oh my god. I feel a bit sick. Again. I suppose you, you're going off the scale there. Bing. Why on earth is it? Why is it doing it and just on, to me? And on yourself and on you, Ray? No? Look at that. I mean. Why is it doing it on me? I haven't got anything I on think, me. I think, I think they're using, using you. And that's why I'm feeling sick. I keep feeling sick. I'm going to take the spirit home with me. Yeah. <laughs> you, can we? No, I don't want it home. This fantastic building behind me is the British Schools Museum. We've done many investigations here over the years. I'm not going to say any more than that. This is the scariest place that we've ever been to. I'm going to let the film do the talking. Since I've been uh, working in a museum, I've, um, I've noticed I uh, could hear children and that sort of laughing in the background. I've noticed um, I've had a couple of taps on my shoulder. I always get asked by the children, does Mr Fitch die here? Did he die in this room? Is there a ghost in the house? They're always, always interested about knowing uh, the, the ghosts in the history of how Mr Fitch passed away because they like the morbid side of things. Uh, I've never really felt um, threatened in the house, but it's not very nice to be in alone, especially in the dark, if you have to ever be around here. Um, so I would always avoid, avoid that, especially when uh, we have um, certain sort of creaks and noises around that startle you. The most activity that I've experienced has been uh, around this corridor here. Um, often noises from it, uh, you'll be downstairs and hear footsteps uh, walking along the corridor so you, you go and check and see who's in, who's signed in, nobody's signed in, come up here um, and no sign of anybody. Um, I did actually do a paranormal investigation up here um, not so long ago, um, about six months ago, and they had off their recording equipment as well. Uh, they were walking along the corridor uh, asking various questions and uh, somebody did catch a sound clip which, which did sound very much like um, uh, a young person uh, shushing them, so it was asking a question followed by shh. Um, it's, it's not a great area to, to lock up by yourself in the dark at night. I was working once and uh, a lady approached me and said, are there any, any ghosts in the museum? And I said, not that I'm aware of. And she told me that when she was in this bathroom washing her hands with her little girl, um, she had said, mummy, what's that baby doing in the corner? And there was no baby in the corner. As a historian, I am rather sceptical about the supernatural, but over my many years of working here at the museum, I have been told some interesting tales by volunteers and visitors. A few years ago, one of our longest serving volunteers was having their lunch in the museum offices next door. He turned and swears to me that he saw three or four young Victorian children standing outside looking in enviously at his sandwiches. He turned again 
and they had disappeared. Many of the tales I hear are based around the Fitch family who lived here in the Hadmaster's house from 1857 until 1902. I was summoned to the house one day by one of our visitors who swore to me that she saw Mrs Fitch walking around here in her kitchen, large as life. In the 1950s, we have some interesting oral history testimony from children who were here at school at that time. Some say they heard the footsteps of a man limping across the corridor above the infant school. Mr Fitch is known to have had a club foot and one leg shorter than the other. Okay, we're now in um, a store room, room off of the main top corridor where there's been a lot of paranormal activity. And this is what they said that the I did. Hello, is there someone here with us? Oh. Hello, are you here with us now? It's um, <clears throat> a bit like um, heavy breathing. Is there anyone in here with us? Give me a name, please. Sounds like it's a fox. Hello? David. <gasps> David. Really clear. Oh, my God. David. <laughs> David, if you're still with us, what is your surname? In 1907, Reginald Hine set off to nearby Minsden Chapel with his good friend, the photographer, Thomas Latchmore. They were hoping to catch an image of the ghostly monk who haunted those walls, having been murdered there, it was said. They came back jubilant, having captured an image of the ghost. This image was published in Reginald Hine's History of Hitchin. However, it was, of course, a hoax and the ghostly cloaked figure was probably none other than Hein himself. Tragically, Hein suffered from acute depression for all of his life. On the 14th of April, 1949, he ended his sorrows by throwing himself in front of a train at Hitchin Railway Station. We're now in Tilehouse Street. Now this street hasn't changed much since Edwardian times. Now a legal firm here have reportedly been seeing a midshipman, a sailor, walking through walls in their offices. What is going on? This building behind me is the former Hawkins department store. Now behind this Victorian facade is a real medieval building. The ghost of a woman and a thin old man are seen here on a regular basis. Staff who used to work here reported cold spots and apparitions walking through walls. Now this is the old coaching entrance to the George Public House here in Bucklersbury. Now, not much has been documented until we did our last investigation here. Let's take a look at the film. And we're still on the trail of the most scary, haunted places in town. Tonight, we're revisiting one of our earlier investigations here at the George in Bucklesbury. Strange noises were heard, footsteps across the ceiling. 
Things being thrown at us. Orbs of light everywhere. What's happened since we were last here? Well, we're here to take a look around. I've had quite a few noises down in the cellar. I think that's probably like the worst. I don't know why. So you'd be working in the bar and you hear something yeah. fall over? Or? Um, I th well, I think I've heard voices downstairs. Downstairs in the cellar. I mean, that was. I was literally thinking about that for weeks on end. Off. Anything you can pick out, or just just background voices? Um, it was pretty loud. I don't know what it shouted, but it was. I think I was downstairs getting some ice, and it literally made me jump so much. And just so, are downstairs. you okay going down into the cellar? Or? Yeah, yeah, no. Um, it freaked me out for a while, like for a good couple of weeks, but. Um, after that, yeah, it just it seems to have calmed down a little bit now, but I don't really hear much now. But okay. yeah, no, it's a bit creepy down there. Anything else in the bar itself? Um, we've had coat guns come off a few times. Yeah. Um, footsteps go across the wall. Things like that, really. I remember one Monday I was sitting down here on this table, okay. and I was um, doing the bookkeeping work, and Lee was actually behind the bar, right. and all of a sudden. I heard this smash on the floor. Lee started panicking, wondering what had happened, and one of our martini glasses from the top shelf behind the bar okay. literally just come flying off and just smashed on the floor. Um, there's also been other incidents with glasses, you know, that literally they'll be in the middle of the table and they'll just end up smashing on the floor without anyone being around them or anything. Right. Now, when I open up on my own and I walk through the, through the door, all the lights are off, it's pitch black, it is a bit like, oh my god, where are the lights, let me turn them yeah, on. Yeah. Um, and when I'm up there on my own, obviously sometimes you do hear like funny banging noises or... So do you ever get that sort of feeling that someone's watching you? Yeah, sometimes, yeah. Like someone's, it does feel like there's someone around, yeah. It was actually in this room that we're standing in now, the bedroom. Um, okay. My uncle Glenn used to run this pub and he said to me that he was asleep one night and he felt a knocking on his chest which woke him up. And as he woke up he could see something above him, leaning over him and it was a, he said it was a boy, um, had long hair and he said that he can remember the image so clear that he could actually draw it. Um, he also had a dog as well that literally that night that it happened the dog did not stop barking for about half an hour 45 minutes he said it really freaked him out but he didn't have any problems with it he just said that you know it, it just woke him up one night good <laughs> it's a woman around there yeah it's a woman there This building is the old Red Heart pub here in Bucklersbury. It dates back to about 1500. Reportedly the site of the last public hanging of a highwayman in Hitchin, possibly in England. His name was William Wardsley and he beat to death William Bradbury, whose spirit allegedly haunts this building. Staff have reported seeing his image sitting on the end of the bed. Well, that concludes our episode of Ghosts of Hitchin. Here we are back where we started, in the graveyard here at St Mary's. Even this fine old church behind us doesn't escape controversy, with the third vicar here being beheaded for murdering a nun. Thank you for watching Haunted Hitchin's Ghosts of Hitchin. Follow Haunted Hitchin on Facebook for information on our next film night. All proceeds go to the British Schools Museum Trust. We have currently raised over £6,000 through film nights. Watch the latest episodes of Haunted Hitchin on our website www.hitchintv.co.uk. Stream all episodes of Haunted Hitchin to your smart TV or mobile device. Search Haunted Hitchin on YouTube. Are you locked up here? Could be. Oh, what was that?
that? Have you been up these stairs before? Yep. Yes. yes. That's a definite yes. Yeah. This could be our most scariest haunted location to date. All sorts of paranormal activity has been happening here over the years. A toilet roll flew from behind me and hit my colleague. There's like an energy, uh, like an energy flow, like a flood. The fact guests who say they've actually been touched by a spiritual being. What is actually going on here? We're haunted here, Jim.